so happy to have you here because frankly, I have heard about you lots and lots on the internet. And <laughs> I've heard, originally I thought there was just one tree of 40 fruit, but there's quite a few of them. How, tell yeah. me, how did this project start? How did you get involved in creating these amazing trees? My great grandfather grafted fruit trees. So I had never met him, but everybody in my family that talked about him spoke about him as if he, he was a magician or had some magical capability. So I, I had always, you know, as I grew up on a farm, I went to art school, which was exactly the opposite of farming. <laughs> and, but grafting always kept coming back to me. And I knew that you could graft stone fruit together. And then I started to wonder if I could control how the blossom appeared in spring, right? So I could essentially sculpt the blossom of a tree. So talk to me about that. So this, your tree of 40 fruit, I talk about it because I'm a, a fruity, fruity kind of person and into fruit trees. I talk about it from the harvest perspective, but mm -hmm. what, what do you see when these trees blossom? What do they look like? They start off pretty much with a white blossom. So those will be apricots and Asian plum varieties. Uh, I've been able to source some uh, Asian or red leaf plum varieties uh, that have pink blossoms. So they're white and then pink. And then after the Asian plums, then it's the peaches and European plums. And the peaches have really dark crimson colors and pinks and whites. And so it's, um, I like to say variegated, but it's almost like little clouds or clusters of blossoms on each of the branches. So you are thinking very carefully as you decide where to put each branch. This is not just about throw the branches on, on the left, you put all the peaches, on the right, you put all the apricots, <laughs> no. you know, no. and then just, you get what you get. This is a piece of art. Yeah, and uh, it totally, it completely arrived out of a absolute blunder uh, because I had grafted a bunch of varieties onto a tree and then um, it was like two springs later, one side of the tree blossomed and the other looked dead. <laughs> I, was, I went, oh, yeah, I'll probably have to consider that. <laughs> we've got a couple of emails here that I'm looking at. Sure. So um, we've got the first one, Kamyar. My name is Kamyar from Brockville, Ontario. My question is, which cultivar of rootstock works best for a multi-grafted stone fruit cocktail tree and which interstem is used when grafting stone fruits to each other so Kamiar is jumping ahead but that's good we want to know okay so okay so um the typically what i use is um it's a marabolin rootstock and then i'll use uh a santa rosa plum uh, so Santa Rosa was developed by Luther Burbank, probably about the turn of the 20th century. Um, and he came up with these varieties that crossed uh, Japanese plums with American plums and a Chinese plum. So they have this crazy genetic sort of history and they prove to be the most compatible. Um, in Ontario, I might, the other tree that I'll use for, for colder climates is a Stanley plum uh, as the base tree on a Mirabilin rootstock. And, you know, the reason for that is out of all of the stone fruits, plum trees provide the best structure. Okay. So let's just go through that with a little fine tooth comb. So okay. you're doing a stone fruit tree and you're starting with mm -hmm. a plum tree as your base, as your rootstock, a plum tree. But you're going to be able yes. to put on what other types of fruit on there other than plums? Uh, peaches, uh, other types of plums, apricots, almonds, cherries, nectarines. So now is this magic or um, so <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> this is the question. So what is the role then okay. of how you are going to connect this plum tree? How are you going to turn some of the branches into peach bearing branches? And you were talking about the interstem there. Yeah. So uh, 
it took a while to figure out, but essentially I realized what I would do is invert the tree. So Mirabilin rootstock uh, is compatible with it's probably the most compatible variety with plums. You can graft European plums to it. You can graft Asian plums to it. And so what I do after I get that form of the tree, right, that perfect vase shape, I'll take Mirabilin cuttings and graft them onto the end of the tree. And that's called an inner stock. So that way I'll be able to graft other plums onto it. So the inner stock is kind of, I'm trying to think of a metaphor. What is it? It's like the, the highway that connects the two different things that you've got genetically two different things. You're trying to put them together and they need something that will be friendly to both sides. Could, is Correct. that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's glue. <laughs> it's the glue. Actually, that's great. Yeah. It's the glue and using these grafting skills that you have developed, you are able to um, graft or merge together these branches that don't necessarily want to necessarily grow together and you're tricking Perfect. them into growing yeah. together. Let's go back again. Now we are talking about these beautiful tree of 40 fruits. You mm -hmm. did the first exhibition. How did things start to get more interesting after that? How did you start getting more commissions from that point? Yeah, it was interesting because um, <laughs> I remember when I first exhibited them, I, I thought nobody's ever going to want any of these. <laughs> so I made all these other, um, I, I had a whole bunch of prints uh, that were for sale as well. I didn't sell any of the prints, but everybody wanted one of the trees. Um, and, and it was you know, as I first started, it was really about the the blossom of the trees, right? I was I was primarily concerned with that. Um, as the project evolved, I started to get more interested in heirloom and antique varieties because I realized that the majority of varieties I had collected to that point were heirloom varieties, and from that, um, as I would as people would ask me to create trees, I would research the varieties that historically grew in the area where they were. I would source them and graft them onto their trees so that they became these agricultural histories of a region. So we have an email here from Susan. There's another Susan out there and Susan writes, wow, what a topic. Who would have thought it sounds too good to be true to have one tree bear all types of fruit. How is that even possible? Is this tree patented? So very cool. Listening from Phoenix, Arizona. So is it too good to be true? <laughs> is there a downside to having a tree of 40 fruit or however many fruit? It depends on who you are. Um, I remember I, the great part about the project is that I, I get to go meet fruit growers who I think are very similar to artists in that they're people that spend way too much time alone. <laughs> so they think of very strange ideas. Um, so as I would go out and talk to, to fruit growers in, in central New York where I'm located, um, they would all, you know, I would explain what I, I was doing and they, they would all go, well, why would you want to do that? And I mean, like, what do you mean? Why would I want to do that? And they're like, you're going to need to pick that tree 40 times. And I was like, well, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> and so from a, from an agriculture perspective, the, you know, from mass agriculture perspective, the downside is that it produces a limited number of fruit from June through, you know, you can even pick fruit, you know, sort of beginning of October, right? Whereas, you know, industrial ag, they want to be able to harvest everything at one time, move through an orchard. Um, it works out great if you have one in your yard because you can pick, you know, at its peak, you can pick 20 pieces of fruit a week and have fruit for 12, you know, 12 or so weeks out of the year. <laughs>